I'm very happy to be here today to talk about smart clothes. To start, I want to introduce Jaslyn McNeil. And Jaslyn's over here on my right. And <laughs> Jaslyn made the dress that she's wearing. And uh, Jaslyn's actually a recent graduate of the College of Textiles at North Carolina State University, where I'm a researcher and I do research on the smart clothes. Um, and one day, uh, she came into my office and she said, I want to put my designs into your, or with your technology. So I want to put your technology in with my designs. And it was a, uh, and the result of that conversation is the dress that you're seeing here today. And the dress that you see here today, if you can't see it in the back, here's a, here's a quick video of, of the dress. Um, it has blinking lights on it. And while a lot of y'all have probably seen dresses with lights or clothes with lights on it integrated, this dress is a little bit different. Um, it's what we call smart. And the, pro the, the reason that we made this dress is not to necessarily sell product or try to make a statement, but it was actually to, um, uh, I guess, generate a conversation. And this conversation really starts with a couple of key questions. And those questions are, number one, what are the blinking lights? And uh, the blinking lights are actually Jaslyn's heartbeat. So Jaslyn's heartbeat is a, uh, is, is this, these lights are actually responding to the activation of the muscles throughout the heart that are uh, pushing blood throughout an entire body. So you actually, if you conglomerate or if you collect all of the signals from those, you actually get what's referred to as an electrocardiogram. This is what doctors use to monitor your heart's health. The next question is, is, well, how do you do this? And we do this through the integration of sensors that we have in, in the shirt that are reading those signals, and then we transport those signals and we turn on and off LEDs or light-emitting diodes that we have integrated into the dress. The next question is really the most important one, and this is why I'm an educator. This is the, this is the thing that I'm looking for when I go out and I teach in my classroom or I go out to public audiences and I talk, and that is, well, what if you could do this? And that is, again, the most important question for me. It's what drives creativity, it's what sparks innovation, and it really is gonna start the conversation about what we're gonna have today, is if you had something like this, what else could you do? And so let's first identify a problem. And the problem is heart disease. If you look around the room, a lot of y'all are going to die from heart disease. Uh, sorry. And in the South, we actually have a really bad problem with this. Uh, it's, it's actually, we have, we have a higher risk. But yet, as I look around the room, I don't see anyone that's actually measuring their heart right now. There's, nobody's monitoring it. The only person that I can actually tell that's monitoring their heart is Jaslyn. And that's because I can see it. But mind you, we don't want to necessarily see everyone's heartbeat. That would be kind of annoying, especially at night. So what could we do to get everyone in here to monitor their heart in a very effective way, in a very inexpensive way? And that's some of the questions that we try to ask and answer within a center that we have at North Carolina State University called ASSIST. And ASSIST stands for the Advanced Self-Powered Systems of Integrated Sensors and Technologies. In really short, what we're trying to do is we're trying to create personal wellness systems so that you can monitor your own health and be more interactive with your healthcare provider and prevent and do preventative healthcare. So it turns out that textiles actually plays a very critical role in this. So you can think about things like you have a Fitbit directly embedded in within a shirt. And the, the shirt actually provides an interconnected network of devices that allows you to monitor what everything is going on inside your body. In addition, what happens is, is that it's really, it turns out that it's really easy to use. In fact, it's as easy as putting on a shirt. I think everyone did that here today, right? Okay, so an example is, is, is actually the shirt that I'm wearing today. So you can't see it because it's private to me. It's actually my undershirt, of course, or is transporting the data of my heart health into this tablet. This tablet then sends this data off to SAS Data Analytics where they perform analysis on my heart beat and all the different muscle activations, and they can try to, and they're trying to decipher all the different important features of my heart. 
And they're trying to relate this back to me so I can do something to make my heart healthier. And they're also relating it back to the healthcare provider so that they can inform me when, I, when I'm healthy. What's your name? Rose, can you hold my heartbeat, please? Thanks. Okay. So it's really, this is really a neat technology, but in all actuality, how do you actually get this into everyone's hands? And the first thing to do is to actually go and put yourself into a doctor's office scenario. Typically, you call the doctor and you, and you schedule an appointment. You go to the doctor and they take a very small snapshot of your health at that moment. And then you, they, they send you on your way and then you repeat this process over and over and over. It's really simple and it's, and it's pretty effective, but, if it, but it's, is it really effective enough to really monitor a health condition that's so important, such as your heart? Um, what we really want to do is we want to integrate a wearable technology like the shirt I'm wearing, and we want to give this to somebody. We want, and this, this shirt will actually be made by somebody what I refer to as a fusion designer. And this is somebody that understands the goals and the challenges of both the electronics industry, the textiles industry, as well as the health industry, somebody like Jaslyn. And Jaslyn will end up making a shirt for you that you'll, send, you'll take home. It'll transport the data out to the cloud to somebody like SAS where they do the data analytics. And then they push that data back to you so you can understand it as well as to your healthcare provider. And they call you when you need to go and schedule an appointment. This is what we refer to as a closed loop health system. And this is really the important key towards preventative medicine. But that's, that's how you actually get it integrated. Now, how do you actually get it produced? And these are the, some of the challenges that I see within the technology and that we study on how we can improve the ability to put this into market. And the first, one, the first challenge is, is manufacturing. And so this was a recent trip that I took to San Pedro Sula, Honduras, where I, wa I was able to visit a t-shirt manufacturing facility. In this facility, they make four million t-shirts a month. They actually have, it's, it's really amazing to see the scale, the efficiency, and the amount of volume that is coming uh, that, uh, of a facility like this. So as the, uh, um, so in a facility like this, they actually have in the, in the very last step of the process, they, they have a room of 2,500 people where they're literally doing, uh, they're sewing the individual panels of your shirt together, and then they put a logo or a, or a label on it, and they package it in a box, and they ship it throughout the entire world. So if you want to create a new technology that can be made into garments, you have to go through a facility like this. And so that's the technology that we've developed in my lab is, is literally putting the electronics in the logo that is typically put into a garment. So the logo is made of a, uh, a material that you literally iron on. And so we are doing iron on electronics. You can easily customize this within the, within the garment in a lot of different ways. Um, so for example, the shirt I'm wearing, but we can also put other types of devices in there like this light emitting diode and we can stretch these garments back and forth and they're really durable and we can, and we can wash them just like you, you, can, you can regularly wash your shirt. The next big challenge is related to supply chain. And the textile, the textile supply chain and the electronic supply chain are both global, so they're very similar in that way, but their volumes, their taxes, as you ship from one country to another country, their timelines, they're all completely different. They're out of sync. And in addition, if you wanna make a shirt that's customizable to you, you don't wanna to have to ship it all the way halfway across the world and then get it shipped back to you. By that time, it's, it's irrelevant to you. So for this reason, it's really kind of a driving force for what we refer to as local manufacturing. And this is, a, this is something that is coming back to the United States, where you can actually have all the different components of your garment made in a close proximity to where you're at. The next big challenge is, and probably the greatest challenge, is the, is the fact that we're dealing with two conflicting industries. Specifically, the, in the electronics industry and the textiles industry, the goals are completely different. In fact, the, the electronics industry, they're just trying to make the cell phone that's in your pocket to be as efficient as possible and, and last as long as possible. The textiles industry, we've been around for thousands of years trying to make the shirt that you're wearing as comfortable as possible in, the, in whatever environment that you want to be in. 
what the challenge is, is, is to create multidisciplinary people that understand the goals and the challenges of each one of these communities. And it's people like Jaslyn that we're trying to create. And what, what we have around here is a really kind of a special opportunity. We have places like the College of Textiles. We have resources through the cutting edge technology that we have in places like the Assist Center. And then we have the broad network of people within the local area around us that can make the people like Jaslyn that start the conversation and make us ask, what if you could do this? And with that, I'd like to say thank you to Jaslyn, uh, and I'd also like to thank you all for your time.